Hi kids. So I am at a field trip today, so I can't be with you, but through the wonders of technology, it's as if I am with you. So <laughs> let's do our warm up. I want you to graph and label appropriately the following equations. And I'm hoping that in looking at this, you will see that one of them, whoops, I had three of them, sorry. One of them has a slope of two, and the second one has a slope of negative one half, and the third one, the slope isn't immediately apparent to me, because this one is in slope y-intercept form, where the slope is two, and the y-intercept is negative three. This one, the slope, the multiplier on x, this is in point slope form, is, in, is negative one half. And the point on the graph is x minus three. So three comma, this, remember this is y minus negative one. So I'm gonna graph these two first. The first one, the y-intercept of negative three is here. And I always label, I'm, la I'm modeling for you what AP and IB want to see when you're graphing and what labels they consider important. So the slope is two and so I will rise up two, go over one, rise up two, go over one, and draw this line. It's a little hard for me on this thing. Always put arrows. So again, this is a terrible line, but it is hard for me to draw on this. Um, now, they always want to have two points determine a line, so they want two points labeled, a y-intercept and an x-intercept. So this x-intercept is some x value when y is equal to zero. I already have the y-intercept. That's when x is equal to zero, y is equal to three. I need to know when y is zero, what is x? Well, I go to the equation and I ask it, hello equation, when y is equal to zero, what x is that? And I can see that by adding three and dividing by two, it's one and a half. Okay? So there's the first one. The second one has a slope of negative one half, so this will decrease over its domain and goes to the point three, negative one. So I'll draw this in a different color and I'll go to the point one, two, three, negative one. And I will use the slope negative one half, so I will go down two and right, I'm sorry, down one and to the right two. So I run faster than I rise, and that line kind of sort of looks like this. Again, forgive my drawing. Always put arrows to show that you understand the domain and range are infinite. Now I have this one point that they gave me labeled, which is swell, but I don't have the x and y intercept. I can see the x and y intercept is about here, but to find it, I mean, there's no magic here. I, to find the y intercept, I plug in zero for x, and to find the x intercept, I plug in zero for y. So I'm gonna do this work down here, and then I'll erase it. So first I put in um, zero for x, and I get y is equal to negative one half. Zero minus three is negative three, and then I will subtract that one. The order of operations tells me to multiply, so I get positive three halves minus one, which is one half. So I will label that one half comma zero. And then, so that's when, what did I do when x was zero? Right, when x was zero, when x was zero, y was one half. Whoops, I didn't label that right, did I? Huh, <laughs> that was silly. When x is zero, y is a half. Um, now I will put in zero for y, so I'll say um, one is equal to negative one-half x minus three. I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative two, 
So I get negative 2 is equal to x minus 3. And then we'll add, and I will get x is equal to add 3 to both sides, and I get 1. So when y was 0, x was 1. Okay? Now, again, when the slope was positive 2, right, I had an increasing line that was kind of steep because the rise was 1 and the run was only 1, so I rose faster. Here, the negative means that I'm decreasing, and I was a little bit flatter because my rise was only 1 compared to my run, which was 2. Now look at number 3. Number 3, the slope is not apparent, right? I mean, it's not that hard. All these things are integers, so I can very easily mentally say, well, I would subtract 4x, and so I'd get 12 minus 4x, and then I'd divide by 3. So my slope would be uh, negative 4 over 3. But I don't want you to have to, this is standard form, and graphing from standard form is actually pretty nice, especially because both AP and IB just prefer that I have my line graph with my x and y intercept labeled. So just imagine here that, in st that again, I'm after x and y intercepts, which are when um, x and y are 0. So imagine here that I put in 0 for x, 4 times 0 is gone, right? So 4 times 0, let me make this in pen, and let me get, make it a different color. Come on, go away, bar. I want my, I want my pen. Oh, this computer is irritating. Anywho, suppose I put in 0 for x. If I put in 0 for x, well, then I'm going to get 0, comma, a y. If you put in 0 for x, can you see that you would just have to divide both sides by 3 to get the y? And if you did that, you would get 4. And then conversely, what if over here, what if I didn't put 0 in for x, but it, what if I put 0 in for y? Because after all, my domain is all real numbers. So I can put, and so is my range, so I can put in 0 for y, and if I put in 0 for y, 3 times 0 is gone, and then I just have to divide both sides by 4 to get the y when that happens. So when y is 0, I have 3. Oh, now it goes away. I want to draw this in a different color. So I have my x and y intercept. I have 1, 2, 3, 0. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 4. And I draw that line. Whoa, that is so terrible. But you get the idea. And sure enough, that is a linear function, the domain and range of all real numbers. And g, guess what the slope is? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, the slope is negative capital A over capital B in standard form. Remember this is standard form, capital A x plus B y is equal to this constant, and the constant is 12. Okay? All right, so that was a review of last night's, some of last night's stuff. Quickly being able to graph and label a linear function whether it's in slope-intercept form, point-slope form, or standard form, and identify x and y intercepts, right? So that, that is an objective that you were going to be tested on. Quickly graph and label linear functions from slope-intercept form, point-slope form, and standard form. Okay, all three. And he, how I'm going to test quickly on an assessment is by giving you a bunch that if you have to get every one into slope y intercept form first to do you're just you're not going to finish the assessment okay so practice doing graphing lines in 
any form and doing it quickly. All right, today's objective, so for your notes, linear transformations. So this is an Algebra 1 objective, and some of you are going to be like, this is so, you know, this is so easy, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to have no pity for you when I go to do a nasty function and ask you about transformations, and I refer all the way back to what we, and the notes I gave you here, because what we learn for linear transformations, so much of it is going to be applicable to quadratic transformations, absolute value transformations, sinusoidal transformations, logarithmic transformations. All the kinds of transformations start here. So, to start with, I want to um, give you some synonyms. If I talk about the parent linear function, or the home parent function, or the base linear function. I want you to know what I mean by that. By all of those, I mean y equals x. I want you to think of this as our quote-unquote normal linear function. And by that I mean every linear function I give you, I want you to refer back to this one. This one is the home, back home, back to the base, the parent function compared to everybody else. And I will tell you that while I'm going to do that here, what later what I will do to you and what IB is going to do to you is what I'll do is I'll change the parent function and then ask you to explain how, given a parent function, how I, thank you honey, how I got a new function. So again, haha, being able to uh, start small and saying our normal is always going to be y equals x. That's how we're going to start. So, here's y equals x. Notice that what I did here was put y equals x into point slope form. In point-slope form, I recognize the slope because it's the multiplier on x, and I'm going to define for you, oh, I forgot about this. I need you to know that IB, not AP, but IB will often use the word gradient for slope. So I want you to get used to, please make sure to write that down, gradient. When IB says, what is the gradient of this a linear function, you cannot come up to me and go, Ms. Getz, I forgot what gradient means. You need to know that gradient and slope mean the same thing. So, I'm going to define um, for our normal function, the gradient, the slope, is the multiplier on x, which is 1. Because of my Algebra 1 knowledge, I know that since 1 is positive, that my line is going to increase. Not decrease. I also know that because slope is 1 and we call that normal, my line is neither steep nor flat. I'm going to say normal. I have the word center in quotation marks here because there's an infinite line has no center, but I want you to think for reason that will become clear later, I want you to think as a center point as the point from point slope. What you see in point slope form. Whoops, silly me. The center goes with the point, not the slope. So, and here's what I want you to think about. 
I want you to think since my normal center point, the x coordinate is zero and the y coordinate is zero, the x is an x movement and the y is a y movement. So always look at the x for anything right left and the y for anything up down. In our parent or home function, um, there's been no movement. Zero, zero is normal, that's the origin, so there has been no movement. So no movement from normal. So there's the picture of our normal linear function. You can see that the normal, the, what I'm going to call the center point, is the origin, or at 0, 0. Comparing the new function to the parent function is what we're going to do when I give you a different function. All right, so I'm going to give you a new function and I'm going to compare that, right? So here is the parent. This is y equals x with the point 0, 0, which is what we call the center point, and a normal slope of 1, increasing line as you read the domain from left to right. So my new function is that one. Notice that's in point-slope form, so I think about the same things. I think about the slope and the gradient. This time, the slope is the multiplier on x, which is 1 half. The slope is positive, so since the slope is positive, I think increasing, not decreasing. Slope is positive. I think steep versus flat. I think not steep, and I think flat. Why I think flat? Flat is because the absolute value of the slope is less than 1, less than normal, meaning that my rise is less than my run, right? My I only rose one, but I ran two. So I am flatter. And who am I flatter than? Flatter than normal. And who's normal? Y equals x with a slope of one. The center point, now remember this is x minus the x coordinate. Well, this says x plus, so I have to rewrite this as x minus negative 2. So, right, I'm going to look at the x coordinate. The x coordinate that was put in was a negative 2, and that's where this positive came from. Negative 2 means left 2 units. Up and down, you look at the y. So I go over with the y, and I say y minus the y coordinate. So my y coordinate that was entered into the formula was 5. Since that's a positive, right, when you have a negative and it's a right-left, when you have a positive and you're talking y, that's up-down. So positive goes up. So now I'm going to graph this. So I'm going to graph this again relative to normal. So let me erase some of this stuff so you can see my graph. So notice that I'm graphing the point negative 2, 5. That's the point. 
and that my slope indeed is still, I, since my slope is positive, I still am increasing, but I am flatter than normal. There's the point zero, zero, right? This, was, this is zero, zero. Where did zero, zero go? The x coordinate went left two and the y coordinate went up five. Zero minus two is negative two. Zero plus five is positive five. Think about that left two, up five. That's not a slope, that's a movement of the center point. Now every single point made that movement. Every single x and y went left two and up five. You are responsible for graphing where exactly the center point went. And then dagger, you're also responsible for the critical points of any linear function, which are the x and y intercepts. So you actually also now have to label three points. How do I find an x and y intercept? Like I do for any function, any time, any place, anywhere. You get an x intercept by plugging in zero for y, and a y intercept by plugging in zero for x. So that's going up here to this equation. First putting zero in for x, and isolating y, and then plugging in zero for y and isolating x. So first I'll put zero in for x. So put zero in here, and I get, I'll do this work down here, y, I'm going to add five to the other side, is equal to one half, zero plus two, which is two, and then move this minus five over here. 1 half times 2 is usually 1, and 1 plus 5 is 6. So when x was 0, y was 6. When x is 0, y was 6. Now I will go and put 0 in for y. So negative 5, because I put 0 in here, is equal to 1 half x plus 2, multiply both sides by 2, and I get negative 10 is equal to x plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides, and I get x is equal to negative 12. x is negative 12 when y is 0. So 1, x-intercept, y-intercept, and center where the center point was moved. This is your transformed point. So you're transformed because you're being tested on transformation. So every point has been transformed. You have to show me where the center, x, y, where did it get transformed to? And that needs to be labeled. And then, of course, your y-intercept and your x-intercept have to be labeled, which are critical features of any linear function, along, of course, with the arrows indicating that you know the domain and range is all real numbers. So, here's what your homework sheet will look like. Part A says describe. So when somebody says describe, that means you talk. Well, for us, you can't talk. It means you need to write. In English, and how each function has been transformed formed from our parent, our home, our base, are normal. Graph each function that I've given you must label the point from the equation, that's the transformed point. As well as both the x and y intercepts. So the x intercept when y is 0 and the y in intercept when x is 0. So here is my equation in point-slope form. My slope is negative one-half. Since I said negative, a negative slope means I decrease. Because my absolute value of this which is less than one, again my rise is less than my run, I'm flatter.
than normal. The center point, the x-coordinate, is 4, and it's a positive 4, so that's a movement to the right. The y-coordinate I don't see, so if I don't see it, the y-coordinate must be what? A 0, so it went neither up nor down, right? Because in our normal equation, the y-coordinate is 0. So describe. The point zero, 0, moved 4 units to the right and 0 units down. So I write that. The normal slope of 1 is now negative 1 half, meaning that my normal line, graphed here in red, used to increase, meaning now my line decreases over its domain and is flatter than normal. So to graph it, I take the point zero, 0, This point zero, 0 got moved to the right 4 units and up and down none. Oh, snap! I have the x-intercept. Um, <laughs> and my slope is negative 1 half. So that is, um, I can either go down 2 and right, I'm sorry, down 1 and right 2, or I can go up 1 and left 2, right? Can you tell me that that's the same thing, right? Correct? A slope of negative 1 over 2 is the same as 1 over negative 2, which is the same as negative 1 half. I hope that's clear. So here is my line. Ooh, I'm getting better infinite domain and range, so I have my arrows. Here's my transformed point, which is also my x-intercept. That was convenient. To find the y-intercept, sure looks like my y-intercept is 0, 2. But just because it looks like that on the graph doesn't mean it is, so I'll go back. How do I find a y-intercept? That's right, I plug 0 in for x. So y is equal to negative 1 half times negative 4, and shockingly that is 2. Yay! So your homework is going to be just like this with a bunch of different equations that have um, different points and different slopes. And your job is to talk and graph. Okay. When you talk, don't forget to describe both right and left movements versus up and down moves and up and down movement. When you talk about the slope, make sure you talk to me about whether the line increases and decreases and whether the line is steeper or flatter than normal. That's it. Have a good day, and I hope um, your homework goes well. Hopefully you have some time to do some homework in class. See ya.